Again, friends, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips joined by our columnist, Scott Davis. Scott lives in Atlanta. He's a lifelong Gamecock fan and a University of South Carolina alum. And his column each week on Gamecock Central brings us a fan's perspective. And the headline this week is refreshed, relaxed, and ready for more. Scott, welcome in. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. How are you? Everything's good, man. Enjoyed your column again this week. And uh, you're right in your column that's on the website this week. We encourage our listeners to check it out. A week off has magical powers. It does. I mean, uh, particularly, as I said, after a bad loss, you know, that Georgia loss was pretty deflating. There's just no, no doubt about it. Um, South Carolina was outclassed, really, in every single phase of the game at home in williams Bryce Stadium in a game that I think a lot of fans, including me, expected South Carolina to be very competitive in, thought maybe Georgia would perhaps pull away towards the end of the game, but I did not expect to see the Gamecocks overwhelmed. And so when that happens early, the second game of the season, it, it does have a kind of ten, uh, tendency to deflate fan hopes and expectations for the season. Uh, it happened in a similar fashion last year after the Kentucky game, which came early in the season. South Carolina put a lot of emphasis on it and came out and played its worst game of the season. So those kinds of losses can take a lot out of a fan base. And as uh, oddly enough, certainly you're never expecting to need a bye week after <laughs> the mm-hmm. second game. But I did find myself kind of relieved that I didn't have to get back into the turmoil of uh, of South Carolina football quite yet could just take a break and watch some games with no strings attached. Yeah, the week off came in an unexpected fashion as uh, Hurricane Florence barreled toward us early last week. You know, it looked like South Carolina and all of the Carolinas might get hammered pretty hard, but the storm stalled and then uh, kind of dissipated, and we got a lot of rain this weekend in South Carolina, but that was pretty much it. So I felt like we were fortunate that it wasn't much worse. Yeah, very much so, and I'm very happy about that. I mean, obviously, in hindsight, I think there may be some questions as to whether or not this game actually could have been played, maybe moved up uh, earlier in the day or something like that. But part of the problem, as I read, was – the Marshall uh, travel schedule, getting them here from West Virginia, that seemed to be as big a factor in the game not happening. So it's been a long time since South Carolina's just had a game outright canceled. I remember it happening, of course, in the wake of 9-11. But, you know, it it doesn't happen very often. South Carolina had to move the game to LSU a couple of years ago. It does seem like with hurricane season hitting at the same time every year, which is around August and September, um, that this has become an issue uh, in the last couple of years and one that going forward they're probably going to have to continue make contingencies for. That's right. So, Scott, that left you a weekend of football watching with no strings attached. I thought it was great what you wrote. <laughs> you love SEC football, but sometimes it's a – relief when it doesn't involve us it, it is uh, and there's <laughs> no question about it i don't want anybody to take that the wrong way everybody knows how much i love the gamecocks but it's nice to just not be on that roller coaster um, of emotion uh, at times and to just enjoy the game and the passion of the fan bases and, and not feel like you're dying inside and that lsu auburn game was a, an epic classic it was a a back-and-forth affair. It looked like Auburn might establish control pretty quickly, but LSU just hanging around, and they suddenly find themselves 3-0. and So they've been a little bit surprising, I think, this uh, early this season, and that's why SEC football is so much fun to watch because there's always a team like that that maybe you're not expecting huge things from who suddenly starts putting together an interesting campaign. And it was great to be able to watch that thing from start to finish. So you watched the Auburn-LSU game. LSU won it on a last-second field goal. And then uh, that brings you to the eternal question, Scott. You sort of get back, you know, you come back uh, front and center on Gamecock football in your column. 
asking fans, yourself, friends, family members, the, the eternal question. What is that question, Scott? And it's a question I've always tried to answer. I've literally asked dozens of, of fans this throughout the course of my lifetime as a sports fan. And that is, and this this is only uh, this only affects football. It, it's not uh, really relevant for the other sports. But the question is whether or not you would prefer to just get soundly beaten, blown out, rolled up, destroyed, dismantled, however you want to uh, say it, or would you <laughs> would you prefer? to hang tough, watch an exciting game, and then lose in the closing second in excruciating fashion, something South Carolina has done many times over the years, as has every other college football team. Of note, you hate when that happens. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure I know the answer. I remember when we lost to Clemson in 2003, the just utter abject humiliation I felt walking out of that stadium just – complete complete humiliation but then again i i actually think i feel more pain at some of these nail-biting losses in the final seconds those are the ones that really really seem to stick in my head as the years go by the blowouts really really hurt the day they happen but it seems like as time moves on they hurt less and less Auburn's agonizing loss, no doubt, left you pondering the eternal question. And you referenced a couple of Gamecock losses in years past that I think everybody remembers, most notably the route at the hands of Clemson back in 2003, the 63-17 mm-hmm. game. And then, you know, on the other side of the coin, the Rod Gardner push-off game, a game that South Carolina probably should have won but did not. Yeah, that push-off game probably, if I if I really had to pick one, remains my most devastating experience as a South Carolina fan. For one thing, it involves Clemson. The Gamecocks had lost to them uh, three years in a row, I believe, coming into that game, so they desperately needed to get that rivalry going back in the right direction. And they had done so, it appeared, um, and looked as though they were getting ready to walk out of um, Memorial Stadium in Clemson with a with a hard fought win. And then all kinds of crazy things happened <laughs> to <laughs> to take that thing, snatch that win away from the players and coaches and fans of South Carolina. So. You know, those are the kinds of games that I'm referring to here. I think this Georgia game, unfortunately, falls into the blowout category. There's there's really no other way to say it. That that game was not that competitive after a quarter or so. So, you know, does that kind of loss hurt you more than something like what Auburn endured? I don't know. I think it's probably just up to the person. My guess is that I lean towards thinking – it actually hurts worse to lose some of those last-second nail-biters. Scott, you hand out game balls in your column every week, and we have game balls for the off week. Oh, sure, yeah. I I gave um, Auburn's fan base a game ball. Always impressed with them. I've been in that stadium several times over the years. And they, as I go on to talk about, um, both they and LSU have a particular quality that I think – really is what makes a fan base come alive and that is that you've had some success you can't just never succeed because then you know then you don't have you have a lot of apathy so Vandy fans for example there's just not a culture of caring about Vandy football but there is about Auburn and LSU but at the same time there's some kind of quality that keeps your fan base Very, very hungry. I've been to um, some games at Alabama before, and to be totally honest, beautiful stadium, fans certainly passionate, but it didn't have that kind of psychotic, you know, this is the most important thing in my lifetime feeling that it does at places like Auburn and LSU. It has that quality at Williams-Brice Stadium, too, for some of these big games, especially recently when the the Gamecocks were having success under Steve Spurrier. So I think those are you, you have to you have to have a reason enough to care, but you also have to have 
some hunger that you need to fulfill, and, and those two uh, fan bases do. Scott, your wife is having a great season. She gets a game ball for the second straight week, and Vanderbilt gets one as well. Yeah, I wanted to thank Vandy for uh, going up to Notre Dame and nearly winning that football game. That was shocking to me, but um, I, any any thought, not that I think this would have happened, but fans love to talk about you know things like this. Any thought that South Carolina might not have taken Bandy seriously is now going to be completely washed away because for for another thing you didn't get to play this weekend and win a game that you know you would have been heavily favored to win so you have still the bad taste of the Georgia game lingering mm-hmm. you haven't won in a few weeks um, you looked you know very bad at times against the Bulldogs so South Carolina will be whether they win or lose, or whatever, I know that they will be ready to go up there and play this game. So I'm looking forward to to watching it and seeing if they can try to rebound and get this season back going in the direction we all hoped it would go. I think if you remember in the wake of that Kentucky game last season, you know, Gamecock fans were about as down as I can remember them being. They, They just felt like, here we go again. We're not really showing signs of progress yet under the Will Muschamp era. When are we going to start seeing signs of life here? And then they turned around and won enough games to get to the Outback Bowl and beat Michigan. So there's still time for this season to turn around, and I hope to start Saturday. Vanderbilt went to Notre Dame this past Saturday and gave the Fighting Irish all they could handle, took them down to the wire. Vandy looked pretty good. And Vanderbilt will be the Gamecocks' next opponent. First road game of the season for South Carolina. Four o'clock kickoff Saturday in Nashville. Relaxed, refreshed, and ready for more is the headline of Scott's column this week on Gamecock Central. Good stuff today, Scotty. Thanks very much. Thank you, Emerson. Talk to you next week. All right, that's my man Scott Davis, and I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for being with us. (laughs) 